Hey guys, it's Ed, and this week we're helping out a fellow Ed, Ed Kramer, who you may know from Instagram and from being one of the hosts of the Digital Fabrication Experiment podcast. He designed this sweet little tombstone for his Pocket NC desktop 5-axis milling machine, one of the more difficult pieces I've ever gotten to make, but I learned a lot, and hopefully you guys will pick up a few little tricks along the way. Welcome to another Wednesday Widget. Now we don't have much extra stock at all to work with in the OD of this round bar. So I trued up these saw cut faces on the lathe real quick to give us a better reference for op one, which we're doing in a three jaw chuck mounted to the subplate that you should have seen us make in a previous widget. If not, card to that video here. Because of the extended length needed here, I'm roughing out with a one inch modular shear hog on a medium length body using a both ways 3D adaptive strategy from Fusion. Card here to this project's page on the NYC CNC site where you can download the F3D file and check out all of the speeds and feeds we used in more detail. Using the Tormach Diamond Drag Engraver to engrave Ed's logo on the top here. At the end of this operation, we'll come back over it with the Superfly just to get rid of that burr. I like to wait as long as possible to do this just in case the part picks up any other little scratches or swirls along the way. Next, coming in with a 3 8 spot drill. Lots of stick out here so we can pre-chamfer these holes at the bottom flange, which will be drilled from the other side. Disregard any pecking you see me doing with this tool. I just forgot to turn it off when I updated my template in Fusion. And you can see something else not quite right here. I had the angle of the spot drill set wrong, so went a little too deep. But luckily I had enough stock that it was a really easy fix just to drop everything down an eighth inch in Z and keep going as if nothing happened. Since we have these four weight reduction holes passing all the way through the core of the tombstone and they have eighth inch radii in the corners, we'll be coming at it from either side with a quarter inch reduced shank three flute and mill for a merit tool. Thank you. 
roughing these pockets out with a 3D adaptive and finishing with a contour set to ramp down with a lot of overlapping passes. The relieved shank on this tool allows us to do this kind of deep finishing work without worrying about the shank rubbing on any previously cut areas. We're at a hair over two inches of stick out, but with this solid shank, I was able to run at our standard aluminum speeds and feeds. Didn't have any issues, no chatter. The clearance was getting a little close there at the end, so I gave the chip evacuation some help with the air gun. Next time I would just extend the stick out another quarter of an inch and maybe back off the speeds and feeds a little bit, just so I wouldn't have to sit there and babysit the thing. Now switching to the same tool, but with almost twice the stick out to ramp around and finish the perimeter of the square part of the tombstone. These faces are going to get decked true once they're mounted to the pocket NC, but I just wanted to experiment and see how good of a finish I could get with this kind of stick out and this small of a tool. It did chatter a little bit at times, but overall I think it did a pretty good job. These counterboards chattered more than a little bit, but I think that was just a case of my RPM being a bit too high. Next, a Fairly heavy chamfer with the 3 8 four flute chamfer mill from Lakeshore Carbide. Feeding it two thou per tooth was not quite as smooth as I would have liked to have seen on this large of a chamfer. I've since backed that down to one thou per tooth. Now we can come back in with the Superfly just to give that top a quick kiss and clean it up. Lastly for this up, I used a slitting saw to cut a relief around the base of the tombstone, which will help facilitate the final decking of these four faces that will be done on the pocket NC. Now that we have these nice square faces on the top side, op two can be done in a vise. This powder coat masking tape we've switched to using for the super glue trick also works great for protecting surfaces from marring and damage from things like vise jaws. So I put a little bit on here to keep it pretty. And a good tip if you need to indicate but you have something in the way like a hat or an overhang like we have here, you can just use a gauge block to offset that reference surface out to where you can reach it with your probe. Roughing out this side with a 3D adaptive and our standard 3 quarter inch shear hog.
four of these holes are for the fasteners that hold the tombstone to the pocket end seats table. The other two are for alignment pins. So Ed should get pretty good repeatability as he takes this on and off his machine for different setups. I feel like I'm referring to myself in the third person here. Now finishing up those four triangular through holes with exactly the same tools and tool paths that we started with on the other side. You can see a few of these corners that I pre-drilled on the triangular through holes didn't quite clean up from the contour pass. So in the future I would go a bit smaller on that drill size. And finally finishing up with this chamfer, which would have been really hard to get from the other side, but no problem at all to finish up in OP2 with a backside chamfer tool. It's been a few weeks now since we've made this and we've shipped it off to Ed down in Texas. He's got it mounted up on his pocket NC now with four of their vices on there, sort of Pearson style. It looks great. That's it for this widget. Hope you guys enjoyed and thanks for watching.